forum uh, for representatives uh, from the plan commission are here. Uh, however, the, the chairperson, uh, Mayor Shane Blazer, is not in attendance. Um, he will be arriving later, possibly. Uh, so we would need a, a motion to, uh, from a, a member to nominate somebody to chair the meeting. So I, I would move uh, that we, Jay, uh, Jay Bemke, uh, chair of the meeting. All right. Um, those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, Jay, it's all yours. Um, all right, with that, we'll get started. It's March 1st, 4 o'clock. Uh, this is the Planning Commission. Um, I guess the first thing on the agenda is the approval of the report from February 1st. Um, what are the Commission's wishes? Please, motion to approve. There's a motion. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion approved. Um, second I item on the agenda is Plan 210095, Alliance Development. It's a request for a survey map approval to combine lots and create an outlot, including the dedication of said outlot as public road right away, located at 1810, 1830A Street South, um, parcel ID 3411723 and 3411724. Kyle? Thank you. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen here, but I may need permission. Um, Joe, Joe, are you able to grant me permission to share my screen? Otherwise, this first request is, is pretty straightforward. We have a, uh, a lot combination request, and typically lot combinations would not come before this body. However, there is a dedication of three feet of right-of-way along uh, this parcel along 7th Street and the official street map for the city does identify a widening of the roadway and so typically with any certified survey map um, the engineering or public works department has the authority to request that um, that dedication and so we have a request by the developer uh, to dedicate those those three feet along the eastern side of 7th Street South and staff would recommend approval as it is fitting with the official street map for the city. Okay, with that, is there any discussion from the commission? Um, anybody from the public wish to speak? Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve from Burkhart. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Tau. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Oh, motion carried. Item number three, um, Plan 210094, Community Development Department, Public Hearing and Action on a Request to Permanently Zone a Recently Annexed Unaddressed Parcel on Grove Avenue, East of 16th Street South, Town parcel ID 0700640 to 11 Institutional District. Kyle. Thanks. I'm going to try to share my screen again here. All right. So this is a request um, to permanently zone the parcel that was recently annexed adjacent to the school district property. Uh, a lot of this has been before you already, so I won't go into the, the details with regards to uh, the school district project, the quad complex project. Ultimately, um, again, when we annex, we have the ability to, to temporarily zone a property and annexation of this parcel was approved last month. And now we're coming on the back end of it and uh, permanently 
zoning the property. Uh, given the surrounding property zoning, the surrounding uses, um, uh, staff feels as though it's, it's fitting to rezone this institutional district, and therefore we would uh, we would recommend doing so. Um, any discussion? Kyle, do we have to have a public hearing for this one? Yes, we do need to have a public hearing. So if you'd like to open the public hearing, uh, you can do so. All right, at this time we'll open the public hearing um, uh, regarding the annexation on Grove Avenue. Uh, we'll go through the no's first. Is there anyone that wishes to speak against it? Second call, is there anyone who wishes to speak against it? Third time, is there anyone who wishes to speak against it? Sir? You, you can come to the podium. Can you press the button on the microphone there? Okay. Perfect. We're not actually speaking against it. Uh, we own the properties um, on 21st place at the end there, um, 2020 and 2010. Uh, and it actually extends into the buffer. And we were just wondering what the buffer is going to do to our adjacent land there. So the, the buffer that was provided in the notice is just a 300 foot buffer. That's the, the noticing requirements we have when we receive requests like this. So all that shows is the individuals that are getting notified of the request. Mm -hmm. So, but according to this, the buffer, can, can we still build on that parcel? Yep, we, so, so the, the, the request is only to, to rezone um, the school district parcel. Again, the buffer shown in the map is only showing those individuals that were notified gotcha. of this request. So it, it, it doesn't pertain in any way to zoning restrictions or anything. It's just simply showing all those individuals that were notified uh, within that 300 foot radius of the property. Okay, okay, makes sense. Uh, another question I had was, is that Grove Avenue going to go through now? With, I'm, I'm assuming that that's gonna be parking for the complex? So at this point, uh, Grove Avenue is not planned to be extended. Okay. Um, I can't speak to what's gonna happen five, 10, 20 years down the road. Um, but initially with the project, there is no plans to extend Grove Avenue. Okay. I and believe right now the city uses uh, the end of Grove for some snow storage, and yeah, right. there are no immediate plans to do so. Okay, and that that pink parcel of property that the buffer is going around—that's for parking for the complex. Am, am I correct on that? The the parking for the complex um, will be extended. Uh, if you look up at the screen here, um, this parking lot uh, for the hockey rink will be extended slightly, uh, about the same size, actually. Uh, in this area. Okay. So that will be the only parking ex uh, constructed for the project. Okay. So the pink is just being annexed in is what basically what? The, the orange area on the map shown on the screen is, is the parcel that was recently annexed and then half of Grove Avenue. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, Kyle, Craig Brown, Superintendent with Dr. Rapids Public Schools. Could I just add that the parking lot would only be added if there's available funds to do so. So it's not a guarantee that there will be additional parking added down there, but it is kind of an alternate if there's money available for now. Thanks, Craig. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Sir, did you state your name and address for the record? Robert and Julie Polson, 2820, 21st place south. Thank you. Yep. Ready? Anyone, this third call, anyone else to speak against? If not, we'll open it up. Is there anyone wish to speak in favor of the annexation for the, the project? Second call, anyone wish to speak in favor of? Third time, does anyone wish to speak in favor of? 
If not, we'll close the public hearing. Vote on this now? Yep, yep. It, uh, you can entertain any further discussion from the commissioners and then uh, right. entertain a motion. Is there any discussion from the commission? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Would move to uh, make it a permanent I 1 status. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Burkhart. We have a motion and a second. Um, please, please vote. Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Um, item number four is Plan 210082 Connexus Credit Union Site Plan Review and Architectural Review to Construct. A vestibule and other site improvements at 1938 Street South, parcel ID 3411731. Yep. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so this request is uh, a little unique, um, unique in that it's a uh, fairly small improvement uh, to the parcel, at least the exterior, uh, but any exterior improvement does require review. And approval for both uh, the site as well as the architectural uh, characteristics of the uh, the improvements. Uh, Connexus, among other things, uh, interior renovation. They are installing an entrance vestibule on what would be the northwest side of the property. They are also looking to install a refuse enclosure on the north side of the property, as well as some windows and an outdoor patio with fencing and um, some other minor uh, landscaping improvements. The property is zoned B2 commercial district and the use as a financial service use is permitted within the B2 district. Again, uh, the architectural and, and site plan review requirements um, would apply and they have been reviewed uh, thoroughly within the staff report. In looking at the property again, um, the, the vestibule is going in the north, northwest corner here uh, the refuse is going on the northwest corner as well here. And then uh, the primary reason for the improvements is to connect to the off-site parking lot that was approved previously off of 7th Street South west of the property. So they are going to uh, create a crosswalk here uh, that will then take you to the vestibule and enter the property from the west. Here's some existing photos of the property. Uh, one of the front on 8th Street, one of the rear. Uh, so again, the windows will go or are uh, proposed to go uh, here. And uh, in reviewing architectural requirements further, um, staff feel as though the, the improvements are fitting with the architectural character as they will match the existing uh, block and, and EFIS on the facility. And uh, I think the glass uh, will actually make it uh, the appearance of a, of a second facade on the building, which uh, should hopefully draw patrons in and, and improve that, that corridor behind 8th Street there. One unique thing I, would, I do want to mention is that the, the property actually exceeds the impervious surface ratio. Uh, right now, there's approximately 89.9% of the property that's impervious, and that does not meet the, the requirement uh, within the zoning code with, uh, that is 80% maximum. Uh, with regards to this nonconformity, um, the, the code would allow for improvements to be made as long as they are reducing the impervious surface ratio. So in this case, the, the improvements um, are slightly going to reduce uh, the impervious surface ratio because they are they're adding some... Um, some green space elsewhere, and they're using permeable pavers for the patio, so it will be very minimal um, as to the uh, the change. But again, it'll go from uh, 89.9 to 89.7, so um, pretty much uh, nil there. Um, again, no no ch major changes to ingress egress, um, no major changes to parking. The other thing I do want to mention uh, with regards to landscaping. Because they are adding the vestibule, it's technically additional building 
and there, there would be additional building landscaping that's required. However, within this area, they're also installing that patio and they're putting in some uh, fencing, some treated timbers um, to screen that area. And those treated timbers also uh, work to screen the existing HVAC units to the east. And therefore, uh, they're meeting the intent of the building, um, the building screening requirement, which is again to screen uh, different utilities, ground mounted HVAC units and things. So I think in lieu of the required landscaping, uh, I think staff would look at the, the proposed fencing to meet that requirement. With that being said, again, uh, we feel as though it's, it's appropriate and it improves that, that western facade of the building. Uh, those improvements will match the existing character and we would, uh, we would recommend approval uh, with the conditions outlined on page one of the staff report and shown on the screen. Um, any questions or comments from the commission? I do want to note that the applicant is in the audience as well, if you have uh, questions from the applicant. Yes. Okay. Can you approach the podium just to get that on record? Sure. Thank you. Just push if the green light's push. on, yes, then it's on. I'm colorblind. Is it on? It's yeah, on. sounds like yep. it's on. You're good. Uh, this is Larry Koopman from Lampert Lee and Associates. We prepared the civil plan for the project. One of uh, the outstanding items that Kyle noted in his report was a public works review of the lighting plan. We do have some light spillage from the lights at the crosswalk that uh, would exceed the limits onto a neighboring commercial or residential property. So we had Public Works review that and they're fine with the lighting at the crosswalk. I think there's still one outstanding issue that I'm working with Public Works on and that is to identify what the city would like at that crosswalk, if anything, for pavement markings and signage. It's a mid-block crossing, so I'll work with city engineering and public works to come up with us whatever is necessary there okay want to hang on up with us does yeah. anybody have any questions i guess not thank you thank you um i guess with that what are the wishes of the commission I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second the motion. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, with that, we'll move on to item number five, community development 2020 annual report. <coughs> Kyle. Most of you got the, uh, the annual report in an email after the um, the plan commission packet went out. Uh, I did not have it complete uh, or reviewed at the time that the, the packet went out, so it was provided in an email. Um, I will also be including this within the, the upcoming council agenda. Um, I wanted to have plan commission take a look at it in the, uh, because you guys approved several of the, the projects from a site standpoint, um, uh, as well as an architectural standpoint. And uh, it, it kind of gives you a synopsis of, of all our uh, department does. And then um, you can compare how uh, years have gone. So, you know, how 2018, 2019, and uh, 2020 compare to one another in terms of total revenue um, and uh, permits issued and uh, uh, kind of put things into perspective. And uh, I just wanted to allow the ability to... to uh, uh, you know, take questions or, or public feedback. Again, we'll, we'll likely be able to do so at the Common Council meeting as well. Um, you know, some of the, the most notable things are the completion of, of the Metalco project, uh, which started a few years ago and uh, is an employing, employing about 80 workers. I don't think they're up to that number now, uh, but in a pretty high-tech uh, manufacturing facility. 
We also had uh, a new apartment, senior housing complex in downtown, the completion of the Boys and Girls Club and YMCA and VA clinic, and then a few projects out on 8th Street as well. And then one that I think is, is, is great for the community and, and hopefully will we'll, uh, meet several of our residents' needs uh, and, and help with tourism uh, after the pandemic, of course, is our aquatic center, uh, which is, which is uh, a key to our community, uh, both the aquatic center and the, the riverfront parks improvements. So I did want to note those as many of those were completed in 2020. With that, if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to uh, take questions. Otherwise, we, we do not need a motion on this. I, I do have a question for you. If you scroll down at the bottom, you had a, there's a neighborhood program. Rapids Rediscovered? Yep, could you talk about that just a little bit maybe? Sure, so this, uh, this was created in 2019. Uh, unfortunately, nobody took advantage of the program. I think that was partially due to um, not promoting the program heavily. Uh, and, and having uh, not having it posted properly and so forth, we did uh, we, we we did pursue a few uh, local developers to take advantage of it. They did not in 2020, so we're going to again do some tweaks in 2021, hopefully before the building season to make it available to uh, developers moving forward and local builders. Ultimately, what it's for is to place an emphasis on infill development within some of our our distressed neighborhoods or our inner city neighborhoods where there may be vacant lots or underdeveloped lots or dilapidated houses um, that aren't doing anything to the neighborhood. Uh, so the, the thought here is that the city uh, earmarked a certain amount of uh, money to assist in incentivizing redevelopment of these infill properties. So the city would, uh, with council approval, would provide up to uh, $5,000 to uh, build on a vacant lot or uh, $10,000 to demo an existing home and build on, a, uh, on that lot within a year. Uh, again, so, to help offset the costs for the lot purchase as well as to uh, offset the cost for the demolition. So I'm hopeful that there'll be some that will take advantage of this program. Uh, but again, when you look at the numbers from 2020, we did not, uh, I don't think we had a significant number of new single family homes in 2020, I think we had two, and I believe both of those were near the periphery of the city. Um, so it was not a great year uh, for new, uh, new single family construction, but hopefully it'll be programs like this and others that were identified in our housing study that we can create to try to uh, entice uh, some development within our, our uh, existing neighborhoods. Anybody else have questions for Kyle? Kyle, this is Susan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I had a, a, a question with regard to um, a different part of the program, and that was the COVID business grant program that you uh, mentioned on page six. And it said that we had 62 businesses that um, took advantage of that program. Do we have a, a list of those businesses, or um, is that public knowledge who got those grants and uh, what they've done with them? Yes, we do have a list. Um, that list was created uh, when I, probably in the summer. We had a council representative ask for that list, and they were presented at a council meeting. I can get you that list. I'll make a note here, and I can I can email it to you. Oh, great! Thank you. You're welcome. The other question I had had to do with this university program, and what um, what the city's uh, commitment was to that in terms of dollars and. What are the programs that we've seen come to fruition as a result of it? Yeah, there are, I, I don't recall what the exact dollar amount was. I know we, we entered into a contract with the, the program um, with UW-Madison, and uh, there were some concerns with the approval of those funds, and so I don't believe we... Um, we paid the total that was uh, re required of us initially, 
Um, but I, I, I think it was around $10,000 or $12,000 was the final amount. But essentially there were seven or eight projects that were created. I think three or four of which have come to fruition. Uh, again, using staff uh, that are working directly with, with different students, whether it's um, capstone courses or, or interns. Um, so essentially what the Madison program does is it, it matches up the city identifies projects and then it matches them up with appropriate students within those fields and those careers. And then those students um, you know, provide information. Uh, one of them was uh, flooding mitigation research on the west side of the river. Uh, they worked with the engineering department and Joe Eichstead in particular to put together some analysis regarding uh, the flooding and, and the mitigation efforts over there. Another one was the um, the promotion uh, both uh, of the downtown and regionally of the area, so coming up with a marketing and promotional strategy. Uh, that project just finished up in December, um, so a lot of that information, we're kind of still waiting on it here. Um, and, you know, there was another one that was to promote the Aquatic Center and create a, a marketing strategy for the Aquatic Center. And then there are a few more lined, art, lined up, both with arts and culture, and um, uh, economic development that hopefully will come to fruition in the spring semester here. Uh, it's typically a, a two to three year program. Again, because of our, our failure to fully commit, I'm not sure if we're, gonna, uh, if we're gonna pursue all seven or eight of the projects initially identified, uh, but I do know we do have a, a few slated for uh, this spring semester with the students. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have anything else? Um, if not, we'll move on to item number six, which is adjournment. Is there a motion? I'll motion. There's a motion, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, meeting is adjourned at 4.30.